Chapter 1, Edinburgh Once upon a time there was a man who lived in Scotland. The man was quite old. His name was Walter. Walter had never married. He had no children or family nearby. He had lived for many years alone, but he was very kind. He always treated everyone nicely. Walter had never traveled far. He had traveled around his home in Scotland, but he had not gone farther. Now it was time to act. He had a mission. Walter didn't have a lot of funds, but he was not poor. He had saved some money in his younger years. He planned to use that money for his mission. He must go to three separate places. He needed money for food hotels and travel. He had a mission, and he must complete it. First Walter traveled to Edinburgh. A lot of people watched him as he passed by. He hadn't cut his hair in a long time. He had a long beard. His clothes were very strange as well. He looked a bit different on the streets of the big city. Walter arrived at the meadows. It was a very large park in Edinburgh. It was full of people. Walter approached a young man. The man was about 25 years old. He was reading a local newspaper. He was sitting against a tree. He looked very calm. Walter sat down next to the man. Good afternoon, Walter said. Hello, answered the man. He looked at Walter suspiciously. Then he carried on reading. How are you, David? Walter said. The man looked up. He was very surprised. How did the strange person know his name? He looked at the old man carefully. Did you say David? He asked. Yes, I did. How do you know my name? I can't tell you that. David stopped reading the newspaper. He looked at Walter this time even more carefully. He looked at the long beard. He tried to imagine him with no beard. Nothing. He had no idea who the old man was. What do you want? Asked David. By now he was very suspicious. Don't worry, said Walter. I haven't come to harm you. I am here to tell you about something. Go ahead, replied the man. Tell me. Walter pulled a picture out of his pocket. In the picture there was a chest. It looked very old. It also looked like it might have something inside it. Something of value. What's that? David asked. Don't you know what it is? It looks like a chest. I've never seen it in my life. Walter looked at David closely. Then he pointed to the picture. Look at this. David looked. The chest had a lock. The lock had three zeros on it. It's a lock. Yes, Anne. Walter continued. The numbers are missing? David questioned. That's it, said Walter. All three numbers are missing. The he looked at David closely. I need those three numbers for my mission, Walter said. Mission? What mission? I can't tell you that, the old man replied calmly. David didn't understand. He had no idea what the man wanted. How could he give the man numbers he didn't know? Finally, Walter said, I'm sure you've got one of those numbers. I don't know what you are talking about. Think about it, David. You must have an old object. An object with a number on it? David thought carefully. He had no such object. He was sure of it. Then he remembered something. He did have one thing with a number. Maybe that was it? Now that you mention it, he said excitedly, I may have something. Wait here. I'll go and get it. Where are you going? Asked Walter. To my house. I need to get something. Wait. I'll come with you. David looked at the man suspiciously once again. The man was old. He seemed nice. He guessed it would not be a problem. Okay, he said. Follow me. David and Walter left the park. They went back along a small street. Then they took a bus to David's house. It was in a different part of town. While they traveled, David asked Walter, what's your name? My name is Walter. 
Walter Davies. And how long have you been in Edinburgh, Mr. Davies? Oh, please call me Walter. No need to be so polite. Okay, Walter. How long have you been in Edinburgh? I've been here two hours. Oh, really? That's not long. Yes, but I like it. There are a lot of nice people and interesting sights here. Yes, there are. The two men continued talking. Soon they reached David's house. The house was small and neat. David took Walter to the garage. David kept many things from his past there. He had things from when he was a boy. He had some old photos. He even had some old school notes. What are we looking for here? Asked Walter. I remembered something I have. It sounds like the object you are looking for. An old object? With a number? Yes, an old object with a number. Please wait a minute. I'm going to look. For half an hour David searched. Walter tried to help. David asked Walter to sit down. He wanted to find it himself. After an hour David finally found the object. Look Walter he said with excitement I found it. What have you found? Walter asked. He got up and walked over. He looked at David carefully how do you know it's what I need? I don't know but I've had this for a long time. And it has a number. David unwrapped an old cloth. Inside was a gold necklace. And inside the necklace there was a number. When you said you needed something with a number David began I remembered this. Do you remember who gave you that necklace? Asked Walter. I'm not sure. I've had it since I was a baby. Walter smiled. He opened the garage door. Where are you going? David asked. I'm finished here replied Walter. Remember that number. And read this. He handed David a letter. Then he walked away. Wait. Come back. Don't you want the necklace? Called David. But Walter was gone. He had disappeared through the doorway. Walter returned to central Edinburgh. He caught the train to the airport. His next stop was Northern Ireland. Chapter 2 Belfast A few hours later Walter arrived safely in Northern Ireland. The city of Belfast was full of people. There were many exciting things to do and see. But Walter had a mission. He knew just where to go. Walter called a taxi. He told the driver a local address. They agreed on a rate. It was in a faraway part of Belfast. After some time he arrived at a large house. The house looked very expensive. The owner took good care of it. It was probably owned by someone rich. It had a very large garden. There were several dogs running around in it. The house even had a tennis court. Walter stood outside. He simply looked at the house for a while. Then he rang the doorbell. He rang again and waited for someone to answer. Hello? He called. Nobody came. No one seemed to be home. The old man looked around. He decided to wait. Walter pulled out the photo of the chest. He looked at it closely and smiled. He put the photo back inside his jacket. He waited some more. Walter heard a car approaching. As expected it was an expensive car. There was a woman inside it. She wore big sunglasses. She didn't see Walter. The woman pressed a button. The garage door opened. She slowly drove in. She still didn't see Walter. The woman reached for the button again. She was closing the garage door. Walter might miss her. Excuse me. Wait. Called Walter. At last the woman saw Walter. She stopped immediately. The garage door remained open. Yes. Who are you? She asked. Can I talk to you for a moment please? Asked Walter. The woman looked at him suspiciously. She walked out of the garage. A butler came up from the garden. He looked at the woman and said Miss Murray. Shall I take care of your car? Yes, Brian. Thank you.
Miss Lucy Murray, am I correct? Asked Walter. Yes, that's me. Lucy looked at Walter closely. I've come to talk to you. It's important. Important? If it's business, I can refer you to my office. No, it's not business, replied Walter. What could it be? Lucy asked. Walter only smiled. Well, whatever it is, come with me. Come into the house, please. Walter followed the woman inside. The house was very big. In fact, it was huge. It was also very beautiful. Is this all yours? Asked Walter. Yes, she answered. I'm a professional designer. At age 19, I started a company. She paused and looked around. What can I say? I've done very well. I can see that. Wow, you have must have done a lot of work. Yes, I have worked very hard. She started walking again. Come this way, please. Walter and Lucy went up some steps. They came to a large door. The door was wooden and very pretty. It was an old design. Is your house very old? Asked Walter. Lucy smiled. No, it's not. But it was built to an old design. I have very traditional tastes. Lucy opened the door. Walter looked around in surprise. It was a huge room. It was full of beautiful and expensive furniture. It was also very neat and clean. Brian the butler soon came in. He had brought afternoon tea. Sir, said Brian. Walter, please. Walter, would you like something to drink? Yes, a cup of tea. Thank you. Lucy took off her jacket. It was a very hot day. Brian spoke to Walter again. Let me take your jacket, sir. Walter took off his jacket. He handed it to the butler. Brian left the room and then quickly returned. He handed some hot tea to Walter. Then he left Lucy and Walter alone. Lucy and Walter sat down. They looked at each other. Welcome to my home, Walter. May I ask why you are here? Walter drank some tea. Then he set his cup on the table. I need to know a number, he said calmly. Like David, Lucy was surprised. A number? She asked. Yes, a number. A specific number? Asked Lucy. Yes. It would be on an object you have. Please make an effort to remember it. Lucy thought for a while. She tried to understand what Walter meant. However, unlike David, she didn't remember anything. I don't know what you mean. Please, if you could explain. Walter looked around. The second number must be here somewhere, he thought. Of course, the photo. He must show her the photo. Can your butler bring my jacket, please? Asked Walter. Of course, replied Lucy. Brian left the room. Seconds later, he appeared with Walter's jacket. Walter reached into his jacket. It had many pockets. It was difficult to find the photo. It took time. Lucy was becoming impatient. At last he found it. Here it is. Walter laughed. I have it. We need the number for this. He put the picture of the chest on the table. Lucy took the picture in her hands. She looked at it carefully. Suddenly she remembered something. I don't know why, but I think I remember something she said. Think Lucy think, said Walter. Lucy stood up. Come with me, Walter, she said. I don't know who you are or what you want, but you've made me think of something. Walter smiled. He and Lucy left the house. They entered a small building next to it. The inside of the building was like a small private museum. There were many drawings, paintings, and other things of value. Near a beautiful drawing Lucy found a small box. She opened it. There was a necklace inside. The necklace was just like David's. It was very old but Lucy was able to open the necklace. She was still able to recognize the number inside. Lucy gave the necklace to Walter. He looked at it carefully. Okay, 
That's all I needed, he said calmly. I still don't understand Walter. What is it that you want? The chest reminded me of the necklace, but I don't know why. Do you? Is that important? Walter paused a moment. I have to go now, Lucy. Please don't ask any more questions. He handed her a letter. Then Walter paused and said remember the number, and read this. It will help. Walter turned and left Lucy's house. As he disappeared he called I'm off to London. See you soon Lucy. Lucy didn't say goodbye. She couldn't. She had no idea why Walter had come. She looked at the ladder. It all seemed very suspicious but yet somehow important. She preferred to forget everything. But she would let the old man have his fun. She slowly opened the ladder. Chapter 3, London At Belfast Airport Walter bought food for the trip. What he really needed was a rest. He was getting tired. Then he remembered. There was just one more person to meet. Then his mission was complete. Walter boarded his flight. Shortly after he arrived in London, as usual he got a taxi into the city. On the way the taxi drove past the Tate Modern Art Gallery. Walter could see how big the art museum was. He asked the driver have you ever been inside the Tate Modern? Yes. It's nice but the art is very strange. It's very modern. Too many strange patterns and colors. I prefer traditional art. I do as well said Walter. I have always preferred traditional things. He looked out the window as the taxi drove on. Finally Walter arrived in the center of London. He paid the driver and got out. Then he looked around. There were so many things to see. But he had to focus. His mission was almost complete. Walter didn't know exactly where the third person's house was. He stopped a man on the street and showed him the address. Excuse me, how do I get here? He asked. Oh, I know that place answered the man. It's next to the boat rental shop. He showed Walter the way. Thank you. Walter called and walked away. Walter decided to walk. It was healthy to walk. Also major events were happening. It gave Walter time to consider things. At last Walter came to the boat rental shop. Next to it there was a small wooden house. I hope someone's there this time, he thought. He remembered Lucy in Belfast. He didn't like to wait. He was impatient too. Walter rang the doorbell. A young man of about 30 opened it. He looked a bit like Walter but without the beard. Hello, said the man. What can I do for you? Would you like to rent a boat? Maybe book a trip? Ah uh, no Walter answered. My name is Walter, he continued. I want to talk to you, sir. No need to call me sir. Please call me Alan. Okay, Alan. I'd like to talk to you, please. Certainly, Walter. Come in. Walter looked around. The house was very traditional and simple. Its owner seemed traditional and simple, too. Alan wore simple clothes. He had traditional tastes. Everything was very clean and neat. Well, Alan said, you wanted to talk to me? Walter started speaking, but then he noticed something. Alan was wearing a ring. There was a number on the ring. Walter began to laugh. What is it? Asked Alan with concern. I thought I was going to have more difficulty. Excuse me? Said Alan. That ring of yours. Who gave it to you? It was a gift from years ago. Back when I was a boy. I don't remember who gave it to me. I think it used to be a necklace. Walter looked at the number. He had found all three numbers. His mission was complete. Almost. There were a few more things to do. Alan Walter began look at this. He showed Alan the photo of the chest. This chest has a lock. We need three individual numbers to open it. 
and three separate people have those numbers. You are one of those people. Alan looked at him strangely. Then he asked, and what's in the chest? I can't tell you that right now. But why do I have one of the numbers? I can't tell you that either, answered Walter. He didn't want to say any more. Not yet. Walter gave Alan a letter and continued, please read this letter. The two other people have identical letters. The letters tell you what to do. I have to go now. Trust me, I'll see you soon. Walter turned and left. Alan was so surprised he didn't know what to do. So he opened the letter. It read, Dear David, Lucy, and Alan, Thank you for reading my letter. As you know, I have helped you find a number. There are two other people with numbers. These individual numbers mean nothing. Together these three numbers open a chest in Scotland. The chest is at my home. I would like to invite you to come there. Please meet me there in three days. I have nothing else to write. I request that you do not try to contact me. Soon you will know who I am. But today is not that day. Have a nice trip. Regards Walter. Three days later David, Lucy, and Alan arrived in Edinburgh. They all went to the same address as per the letter. Lucy and Alan were the first to arrive. Then came David. Hi David said. Hello said Lucy and Alan. All three people paused for a few seconds. At last David asked what are we doing here? Have you read the letter? Said Lucy excitedly. Yes the men answered. But I have no idea what this is about added David. Well let's go in and find out said Lucy. She rang the doorbell. Walter opened the door. He was dressed nicely. After all this was a very special event. Hello, he said calmly. Then he invited them in and said thank you for coming. The house was neat and simple. It was very traditional. Walter offered them tea but no one wanted any. They were too excited. Finally Walter smiled and said follow me. Walter brought Alan, Lucy, and David to a room. In the center there was the chest. They ran to the chest. They all had their numbers. They were ready to open it. David put in his number first. Then Lucy put in hers. Finally, it was Alan's turn. When he put in his number the lock made a noise. Alan pushed open the chest. The chest was completely full of stuff. On the top of the things there was another letter. Alan laughed. Ha, huh, another letter? I can't believe it. Does anyone want to read it? Said Lucy. I'll read it, said David. David took the letter from the chest. He read it out loud to the others. Hello, David, Lucy, and Alan. Thank you so much for coming. I have brought you here for a special purpose. You all know that you were adopted. I checked that with the adoption agency. David's hands were shaking. Is that true for you guys too? Yes, said Alan. Me too. Now read on please, Lucy said. The three of you. You are siblings. I am your uncle. Your mother was my sister. She and your father died in an accident. It happened just after David was born. These are your parents' things. The necklaces are from them as well. After the terrible loss of your parents, I was your only family left. I tried to keep us as a traditional family, but I couldn't care for a baby and two young children alone. I had to put you up for adoption. I didn't want to put you in a facility, but I wanted to be sure you had loving parents. I wanted you to have the best lives possible. So I asked an adoption agency for help. Now that you are all adults it is time. I wanted to tell you. You have more family than the ones you know and love. Look around. I invite you to meet your brother's sisters and your uncle me. Love Walter. David, Lucy and Alan looked at each other. Then they turned around. There was Walter, their uncle. He looked at them and smiled. I have so much to tell you, he said calmly. 
Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give it a like.